Hello, it's Dr. Macho for Heart and Lungs Focused Ultrasound. In the first lecture of diastolic dysfunction, we discussed the possible causes. You can see them in this slide over here. And we discussed a little bit of the background. Well, now we have to continue and understand what diastole actually is. Here you see an ECG and there's the P wave, the QRS complex, the T wave, and the next P wave and next QRS complex. And from the middle of the T wave to the P wave, this is diastole. How does diastole not only look in the ECG, but how does it look on the echocardiogram? In this case, you see a parasternal long axis view of the left ventricle. So it's focused on the left ventricle. You can see it in the middle. You see on top of the image, the right ventricle, and you see the aortic valve, the mitral valve and the left atrium. And the diastole is the time from AV closure until mitral valve closure. So when systole is done and the aortic valve closes, we wait for the opening of the mitral valve and then for the mitral valve to close again. This is the filling of the ventricle, so diastole. We can see it in another diagram. And in this diagram, you will find several time intervals and waves we have to measure in a later stage. We see the E wave and the A wave over here. Then we see the IVRT and the IVCT and diastasis. What does this mean and how can we differentiate those time intervals? Well, let's start with the so-called IVRT. It's isovolumic relaxation time. It's a very, very short time interval from directly the aortic valve closure to mitral valve opening. So the mitral valve is not immediately opening after aortic valve closure, but there's a little bit of a time gap. That's the IVRT. Why is it called IVRT? It's in the name, it's isovolumic. So there are no volume changes within the ventricle. It's a relaxed ventricle with no volume changes because the valves are closed. Volume cannot move. And the LV pressure is still below the left atrial pressure and that at some point leads to the opening of the mitral valve. We continue with the rapid early filling, that's the so-called E wave, the rapid early filling phase, the mitral valve opens and the ventricle starts expanding. And LA volumes and pressures will drop of course and the LV literally sucks in all of the blood they can get. And this is approximately in young healthy individuals, 70 to even 80% of the blood. The next phase that follows in between the E wave and the A wave is the so-called diastasis. The diastasis is also a short time interval where only little filling of the LV happens because the LV already sucked in all the blood it could get. It's very heart rate dependent. So in tachycardia, you might not have this time interval and the pressures in between the left atrium and the left ventricle, they are equalized. Then after the diastasis, we have another phase, the so-called A wave. The A wave is the atrial contraction phase. Now the atrium contributes to the filling of the left ventricle. And in young, healthy individuals, it's approximately 20 to 30% of the blood which is pushed from the left atrium into the left ventricle. The left atrial pressures increase just a little bit to push the blood into the left ventricle. And at some point, the left ventricular pressures are higher than the left atrial pressures. And then diastole is finished and the mitral valve is closing. The next time interval is the IVCT. The IVCT is the isovolumic contraction time and this is the time already where systole starts. So the IVCT already belongs to systole.